Welcome back guys to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the camera raw filter on Photoshop. Now this is a really interesting technique that you can learn. It's got so many different ways of improving your images and worsening them as I found out but I haven't really long got into using it but when once I did start using it it enhanced my designs 10 times so if you guys want to learn as well just follow along the video I'm gonna leave these images in the description that I'm using today and then you'll be able to follow along just like I'm doing but if you want to get your own images and try them out then that's fine I've picked two images today one's a lifestyle and one's a city image so I've got a bit of variation as well I've um, tried to use images that have been taken professionally already so that you can still so that I can show you that you can still use camera or filter on professional shot images just to enhance them that little bit more if you do enjoy the video leave a like and let's get straight into it so we've got our first image here so what you want to do is just unlock it from the background and then go to filter or actually select it and then go to filter camera or filter and then you'll be presented with this menu now I know it looks quite intense I guess you could say um, but it's it's really not you're just gonna be presented with this one first and it's called basic and, and then you're just gonna click down here and then you can see the before and after and see what you've actually changed so the first one's a temperature so this is just like if you want a warm image or a cold image sort of like it's photography speak really because a lot of people know like the difference but if you're new to this then you might not so if I as you can see if I increase this to the blue side it's just gonna get a bit of like a colder image more like muted colors a bit bluer and then if I go to here you can see it looks like a warmer image but obviously for this lifestyle image she is holding an umbrella in the rain so you wouldn't want it too too warm because it wouldn't make any sense so if we make it a bit blue already we've changed the mood a bit as you can see here see she's got a lot different now so and then also this is also adding pink so like it's like a secondary color just to blend it a bit better so you can add a bit of green or a bit of pink i don't think the pink works right with this so if you add a bit of green in then you can definitely definitely develop the image so the next thing is exposure and contrast. This is all making the image look crisp and looking better. So if you increase the exposure, you can see it lightens the image or if you decrease it, it darkens. So I'm going to darken it a bit just for a bit of effect. And then I'm going to increase the contrast so that it increases the shadows and all the uh, like dark areas on the image. So as you can see, the side of her body down here has gone a lot darker. But if I decrease the contrast, you see it would lose a lot of it. So I'm just going to increase that to about 50 and then I'm going to increase the highlights as well. So this brings the highlights on top of the umbrella and on her hand over here. Uh, it just brings them out a bit more. Now the shadows, I want them to be still dark. So as you can see, if I increase the shadows, it obviously darkens pretty much the edges of the image a lot. So you don't want them too dark, but enough so you can see them. And then you this, this one, you can increase the whites and the blacks. Now this is going to be a key factor of the image because this is where you act like there's a lot of whites and blacks in an image. So if you increase the whites and then I decrease the blacks because the blacks are used for shadows mainly. So I want them darker. And then you get down to your next bit, which is texture. This is all about texture you want to see on the image. And like if you want to see all the little bits of hair she's got or the bits of clothing, like all the texture on it. So if I increase this, as you can see, it just becomes a little bit more crisp, crisp and defined. So you can see all the little ridges in her shirt and all the texture and you can even see all the cracks in her lips on her lipstick so it's a really helpful tool and then you can increase clarity which basically clears up the image so you can see a lot more so and then dehaze is sort of just I, it i don't really use it much personally but it sort of just clears does what it says really dehazes the image but sometimes having a haziness on the image gets rid of some of the mistakes that a photographer's done and it looks quite good so now i'm going to go to vibrance this is just obviously color you've seen this on the hue saturation it's just the same thing so you can bring out the color a bit more uh, obviously you've got a bit of lens flare there and lights in the background so that looks quite nice uh, you don't have to increase saturation you can make it a black and white image if you want after you've added all these effects but if you want a bit of color obviously it looks quite nice but if you don't want the vibration the vibrance too high then you can reduce it it's uh, it's completely up to you really and then we're going to go down to the curve so if you go to the curve here you can sort of the uh, s and then you can move it up at the top so it increases the darks and the highlights so this is a standard s curve which is what a lot of people use on camera raw filters. So it sort of just makes the perfect blend between the colors. Um, there's not more, not much more you can say about this. I've left a video in the description which I've been talking about curves. So if you want to go watch that, it will give you a full rundown on what the curve actually does. The next thing is reds and greens and blues. So obviously you can, you know, increase reds, blues, 
like personal preference really i'm just going to leave it as it was and then just go back because i'm going to leave that video in the description so you can watch that and then detail is obviously sharpening the image it depends on how sharp you want it like if you want it i usually add about 20 sharpening obviously you need to have good quality images this one isn't the best because you can see her fingers are looking a bit pixelated but usually you would be able to like do this with high quality images and then noise reduction sort of just mutes any like pixels like i've just done here if i increase it you'll see it sort of gets rid of a lot of texture but then you want the texture on certain images so the next thing we're going to do is color mixing now i don't use this very often but if you want to you can undiscovered colors within images that you wouldn't know about unless you use this so obviously orange there's a lot of orange and if i increase it you can see she goes a lot redder than the previous image so as you can see we've already changed this quite a lot i'm not going to do too much on color mixer because i don't think it's going to work well with this design because i don't think it's a very high quality image so i'm just going to leave that for now optics i don't use um i just think it's a bit unnecessary geometry i don't use either effects i use quite a lot so if you want to make it look like an old-fashioned or like it's been taken on an old-fashioned camera you get grain on images like that so this is good for making it look old and also it blends the image together so it gets rid of some some uh, mistakes or any blotches on the image because it just blends it together so you increase the size so you also get bigger grain the roughness makes it just look really old or hard conditions or you just reduce the roughness to about 40 and the size to about 20 and the grain to about 40 that's usually where i'm at uh, use a vignette it's sort of a camera effect so you can it sort of darkens the edges to make it look like it's focused on the certain object and then you go to calibration and then this is just playing around with colors within shadows uh, if i increase the green it gets rid of the shadows if i increase the pink it brings it out a bit more it's same here like if you want it more blue just to decrease the green as a primary if you want to increase it it makes it more of a turquoise color so something like that really bring it out so now if you look at this design we've sort of created sort of a cyberpunk type of image compared to what we had before over here if you look camera raw filters completely changed the design but i think it looks really cool obviously some of the colors don't look perfect because obviously they're not meant to look like that but if you learn this technique you can do a lot of things with camera raw filter that will just absolutely blow your mind probably actually increase the blue saturation but i kick it okay as you can see that is the image we are left with i think that looks really cool myself personally there are many different like designs that you'll do and sometimes it won't work on them sometimes it'll look stupid and it just like there's no need to do it but there's a lot of designs that i've done and i've started using this after i've made the designs and it has completely enhanced the images so i'm going to move on to the next image now this is just going to be the lifestyle one now i'm going to move on to the city image so if you would like to follow me on let's go straight to the next image right so we have our next image now i'm going to run through this a bit quicker than the last one because obviously i showed you the ins and outs of the camera or filter on the first one so if you select your image filter again camera or filter now i'm just going to play around with this obviously you want to make sure you've got your two screens so you know what you've changed i'm just going to make this a bit of a warmer image i think because obviously it looked a bit bit muted the colors and you know not too um too inviting i would say uh it just looks a bit hectic so you want to sort of increase certain areas that you uh find dark or light if you don't want too much light so i'm going to decrease the shadows and then i can see certain areas of the image that i couldn't see before so if i increase them see it just sort of like you know gets rid of it i'm gonna decrease the shadows and then i'm gonna increase the whites because there's a lot of actually no i'm gonna decrease the whites because i find there's a lot of whites in this image like here you're sort of losing some of the design and the blacks i just want to increase as well just so i can sort of see a bit more of the image now texture is going to be a key here so if you increase the texture up to about 66 you can see it all looks a bit more crisp now and i can see all the cars at the bottom and then obviously you can add clarity as well or you can just not add it but if you do as you can see look if i increase it or decrease it you you lose parts of the building and then if i increase it you can see all the bricks and the cutouts of where they've been laid now i'm going to move on to vibrance now so i want it quite vibrant i want it to look quite clear i want to increase the saturation so this is looking like quite a nice day now obviously we started off with quite like just a boring bland image and now we've got a quite a nice one so i'm just going to 
do an S curve again. Obviously, this works with most designs, really. S curve is pretty standard with the industry. And then I'm just going to move to the reds, I think. And I'm just going to see what I can play around with. And you don't have to do, you can change the S curve. It can be any way you want it to be. It doesn't have to be one way, like type of thing. It's personal preference again. Now I'm going to go to sharpening. Just going to sharpen the image again, just so I don't lose any texture or bits that I need. And then I'm going to play around with the color mixer and just see if this has any effect, because some of them don't. So if I increase the yellows, you can see it goes a bit more orange and then the buildings will change like there's so many different things you can do with this like it's the the possibilities are endless i'm going to go down to effects now and add my grain this might not work on some designs but it might work better on other designs sometimes it doesn't work very well on city images because there's a lot of glass and like the it just gets messed up with it it just creates like a haze uh but you want to make sure that it works on your design that you're working on so i'm going to add a vignette as well just so it looks like i'm focusing down the street so it depends what the image you're working with as well obviously you've got to make the design fit to what you are working with now it looks like we're focusing down the street uh, i think that looks really nice and then if i go to calibration again with the shadows i'm just going to sort of decide how I want them to look so if I, there's a lot of green up here and down on the street so I, I make sure I want the green to like sort of stand out a bit and just make sure that it doesn't get lost within the design there's a lot of blue there down there which should pop out as well you want to make sure you keep images popping and not to um, if we look in this other design on the other side it's got a lot of muted colors and it just looks a bit boring so now that I've added all these colors in it sort of made it a little bit more interesting and a bit more inviting shall we say so now this if you saw this now it would look like quite a nice day nice like warm day and that looks like a bleak cold day so that's what I'm trying to go for here so by doing this I've sort of changed the design and if I click OK it will just process that and then there we go we've got it changed boom looking down the street focusing a lot of texture a lot of color a lot of pop in the design so i think i've shown you the ins and outs of a camera or filter if you have any questions leave it in the comments below and i'll let you know i'll leave these images so you can follow along if you want to use your own images go for it it'll be good for some practice but let me know what you guys think if you did enjoy leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one